Hello and welcome you all to this new video on my channel making IT simple. Let us imagine a situation. We are at a shopping mall's billing counter. There are three people standing in a queue. First person has 30 items in its shopping cart. Second one has three and third one has five items. According to our previous videos algorithm that is FCFS, first person standing in the queue will be served first, then the second one and in last the third in an order as they arrived. But it causes a convoy effect. If you want to know about FCFS or convoy effect, watch my video on it. Link is in the description below. These two require lot less time for the service, but they have to wait for a lot for this person who has lot of items. So one solution can be who has the least amount of items get served first. So first person to get served will be this with three items then this one with five items and in last this person with 30 items similar to this solution is our today scheduling algorithm shortest job first fcfs works on arrival time whereas sjf works on burst time so let's dive deep into it So SJF or shortest job first is also a CPU scheduling algorithm. As the name suggests, it prioritizes scheduling based on the burst time. So the process that needs less execution time will be scheduled first. It significantly reduces the average waiting time problem that we faced in first come first serve scheduling algorithm. It is a solution on convoy effect caused in FCFS. This algorithm is also non-preemptive. Once a process starts its execution, it won't leave until it completes its execution. Using a simple problem, let us understand how the SJF algorithm actually works. So let us consider this table. There are five processes ranging from P1 to P5. Arrival time and burst time of everyone is provided over here. Let us understand how and in which order will these processes get scheduled with the help of Gantt chart. Before we start, take a note that all values in this example are considered in milliseconds. So as always, time starts at 0 ms. Which process or which processes have arrived at 0 ms? None. So, CPU remains idle from 0 ms to 1 ms. At 1 ms, have any processes arrived? Just one, that is P1. It arrived at 1 ms. Now, as there is only one process, it will get scheduled right away. Its burst time is 3 ms, so it will execute from 1 ms to 4 ms. Now it is 4 ms. Which processes have arrived until now? P2 and P3 both have arrived at 2 ms. Now we have more than one process. Now which will get executed first? We need to compare their burst time. P3's burst time is less than P2. So P3 will get scheduled before P2. P3 has burst time of 2 ms. So it will get executed from 4 ms to 6 ms. Now at 6 ms, which processes have arrived in ready queue? P2 was already there, but now P4 has also arrived at 6 ms. Now if we compare these two, P4 has 1 ms burst time and P2 has 4 ms burst time. So the shortest one is of P4. So it will get executed first. It will get executed from 6 ms to 7 ms. Now 7 ms have been passed, P2 is left in ready queue and P5 has also arrived at 7 ms. Again the comparison. But now if you see, both have same amount of burst time that is 4 ms. No one has shortest, both are equal. Now in such case, what should be done? In such case, when both or multiple processes have same burst time, they should be prioritized by arrival time. P2 and P5 both have 4 ms of burst time. 
but P2 has arrived before P5. So it will get the preference first. It will get executed from 7 ms to 11 ms. And finally, as P5 is the only left process, it will get executed from 11 ms to 15 ms. This is how SJF will actually work. So we saw how SJF actually works. Now let's discuss its advantages and disadvantages. First advantage of SJF is it minimizes the average waiting time. The problem that we faced with FCF, FCF is SJF provides a solution over it. Second advantage is maximum throughput. Throughput refers to the rate at which system can complete a task within a given period of time. As SJF prioritizes shortest job first, it provides maximum throughput. Now talking about its disadvantages, first one is hard to implement. So SJF works on scheduling based on burst time, but it is practically very hard to predict burst time of any process in advance. So it is not very implementable algorithm. Second disadvantage of SJF is starvation. Now what is starvation and how does it occur? Let us try to understand using an example. Let us consider this table and following is our Gantt chart. Starting at 0 ms, which processes have arrived? P1 and P2. But as we can see, P2 has the shortest burst time of 2 ms. So P2 will start execution from 0 ms to 2 ms. Now at 2 ms, we have P1 and P3 has also arrived. Between P1 and P3, P3 has the shortest burst time of 2 ms. So P3 will get executed from 2 ms to 4 ms. Now at 4 ms, we have P1 and P4 has also arrived. Between P1 and P4, P4 has the shortest burst time of 2 ms. So P4 will get executed from 4 ms to 6 ms. Now at 6 ms, we have P1 and P5 has also arrived. Between P1 and P5, P5 has the shortest burst time of 2 ms. So P5 will get executed from 6 ms to 8 ms. Now just imagine, similar to these short burst processes, many more short burst time processes keep on arriving continuously. Then P1, which is having 30 ms of burst time, will never get a chance to get executed. It will be starving for execution. This is what starvation is. So this can happen when scheduling is based on shortest burst time. So this is one of the disadvantages of SJF. So this is all about SJF, shortest job first scheduling algorithm. We discussed how it works, its advantages, its disadvantages, and in deep we saw what starvation is. Hope you understood all the concepts. If your doubts got cleared and you understood the concepts, like the video and share it with your friends, classmates, colleagues or any other person who needs help with this concept. And for more such simplified and amazing videos, subscribe my channel Making IT Simple and press the bell icon to get notified about my new videos on the channel. See you in the next video. Thank you.